All right, we're moving on to skull. So um, some considerations, you can do skull erect or recumbent, either or, depending on your patient position. The KVP most often for our equipment will be 80. 40-inch uh, SID, small focal spot. We're looking for a bony detail, and you're going to shield your patient. So some common positioning error, errors for skull mainly are rotation and tilt, and knowing the difference between the two. So rotation is either looking towards or away from the IR. Tilt is when your forehead and chin are not in alignment. One is closer than the other. Excessive flexion or excessive extension, so their chin is tucked down, or their chin's way up and they're looking back, or incorrect central ray angle. And those are particular for, um, each view has a specific degree angle and line that it corresponds with. So something that people do often is use the patient's nose as their centering guide. Most patients' noses are not um, symmetrical, so I use the orbits as my guide instead. Just a tip. Patient prep, I always wipe down the bucky with my patient in the room. Wash your hands, wear gloves, don't touch their face without any gloves on. Uh, remove any possible artifacts, so glasses, dentures, partials, hearing aids, um, any jewelry that they might have in, wigs and hair pieces, especially those with bobby pins, those need to come out. Ponytail holder, even if it doesn't have the metal um, piece to it, I would take that out if they have a prosthetic eye. If They usually will be um, forthcoming about that and tell you about that. And braids and dreadlocks, they will show up as an artifact as well. Wet hair as well will um, show up, so try and avoid those. So for us, our routine at Bay State for Adult um, is a PA Caldwell, an AP Town, and a lateral. If they um, have a specific side that they're looking at, if they have pain on the left, then we do a left lateral. If they don't specify any pain um, on a certain area, we do a right lateral. Uh, pediatrics, we do an AP, an AP town, and both laterals routinely, but I always recommend checking with the pediatric radiologist prior to starting um, if they have any other specifics. Sometimes we do a tangential, and sometimes they want you to put a little metal BB on the area of interest, so always ask first. For your PA axial Caldwell method, they can either be prone on the table or um, pee at your upright wall stand. Your central ray is going to be angled down 15 degrees, so caudad, and exit at the nasion. So I always start with my patient with their nose and forehead touching the bucky, and then you're going to adjust their head until the OML is perpendicular to the IR. Once you get that, the nose or the forehead might not be touching, and that's okay. I would rather have the line perpendicular than have their nose and forehead touching. So remember, your patients, they're shaped a little bit differently each, right? So... The more important part is that the OML is perpendicular to the IR, so watch for that. How do you evaluate it? You want your petrous ridges over the one lower third of the orbits, and you want to look at your orbital margins on the lateral sides here and see if they're equidistant. So you're going to check and make sure you have the correct central ray angle and that your patient is not um, rotated. They're not looking one way or the other. This was just a comparison. So a straight on PA with no angle. Obviously you can see the petrous ridges are way up here on the supraorbital margin or um, here with the 15 degree cod. Well, um, cod at angle has the petrous ridges at the lower third. This was just an anatomy picture for fun. AP axial or the town method. Um, I really recommend this be done supine. Um, upright, I tend to find the patient gets pulled too far away from the upright bucky. It's a little bit more difficult. So I always recommend laying the patient down on the table for this. Tuck their chin down. Um, so OML is perpendicular. If they can do that, you're going to use a 30 degree cod at angle if you're going to the OML. If they can't tuck that chin down, you're going to have to use the IOML and add seven degrees. So you're going to need a 37 degree to the IOML, 30 degree to OML. I always remember this because the higher degree has more letters in the name. So 37 is for the IOML because it has more letters. 30 to the OML. Um, it does tend to cut right through the EAMs. 
So where you can see this tube angle, it usually slices right through the EAMs. The central ray is two and a half inches above the glabella, so way up here. Um, some people tell me to go to the hairline, but as you can see in this gentleman here, his hairline is way far back more than hers. So the hairline is not a location I would use. Two and a half inches above glabella, all right? And the focus of this one is the occipital bone. That's where we're looking at. So you can see here, occipital bone is seen clearly. Um, we're looking for the dorsum cellae within the foramen magnum. So remember this big circle here is your foramen magnum. And then right in here is your dorsum cellae. All right, petrous ridges are symmetric. These are, uh, I almost feel like they look like wings here, right? They're symmetrical on either side, showing that I'm not rotated or tilted. Here's a nice um, identifier here for Raymond Magnum. Your dorsum cellae is right in the middle here, okay? And uh, the red mark, petrous ridge. Another picture for fun. You know I love my anatomy pictures. Okay, lateral skull. Again, you can do it upright or recumbent. Um, you can have them, this girl right here, she's kind of in an RAO position, looking um, sideways. This gentleman is supine and he's looking way over. I feel like you need some really flexible neck muscles for that. Um, and this female is upright. Something to watch out for is this lower picture here where her chin is clearly closer to the IR than her forehead and her pupils are not equidistant. So whichever one you choose, you want the interpupillary line perpendicular, all right? So you want straight down this way, straight across. I always recommend looking straight in front of my patient. I look at their orbits, I look at their forehead and chin um, alignment to make sure they're straight on. And then your central ray is two inches superior to the EAM. You do not have to get the mandible on, on your lateral skull. And I feel like a lot of people think that you do, and that's why you have to open your collimation, but the mandible is not required on your lateral skull. Well, not for us anyway, okay? So I don't want light way down here on their cervical spine, including the chin, right? So we just want the top. Just watch in the back if they have a lot of hair. Sometimes that's a little deceiving. Something I have found is your patients may need um, some sponges to help get them into that lateral position, especially if they're in that REO. Um, your more slender patient, they might need a little bump underneath them to kind of push their chest up to get them straight on lateral. Your larger patient, your larger barrel chested patient, you might need a sponge under their head to get them lined up. So just watch for those, okay? Trauma skull. So if you if the patient can't um, turn on their side, they can't stand. You just do it um, simply. You're going to put a sponge underneath their head and shoot cross table exactly the same centering. You're going to use a grid cassette um, and shoot across at your 40 inches. Okay. How do you evaluate the lateral skull? Well, you want the entire skull on check, um, and then I really look to the cella turcica here to make sure it's superimposed. It kind of looks like a saddle, right? Um, your EAMs, so your external auditory meatus here are superimposed. This one, you can't really see the outside of the ear, the auricle very well. And then I'm looking for one um, single border for occipital bone, right? And you don't want extreme flexion or extreme extension, which this one is not. These were great, just visuals here. So. You can see the EAMs are separated. We not we can't see our saddle. The two oracles are separated and the mandible is separated here. So this is a poor, um, very poorly rotated skull. Terrible rotation, it says. Um, here's another one. You can't see a cell turcica. You can obviously see that the C-spine is in an oblique position. We've got almost a nice um, oblique mandible here. So this is very rotated. This is a nice lateral skull, cella turska, the saddle posterior area here is really nice and superimposed. Oracles, um, oracles are superimposed, EAMs are superimposed along with the mandible. PD skulls, um, for us, we normally do an AP, an AP town, and um, a lot of our radiologists ask for both laterals, but I always recommending, recommend asking the specific PD rad that's on because sometimes they want us to put on 
um, a metal BB. They might want you to do a tangential view. They may want to come in and evaluate the child and see what um, areas we're looking at or areas that we're focusing on. So I tend, I'm a big um, set my own technique person. Um, if you photo time, you're going to use center cell at around 70 kV. Use sponges, right? So to hold these kids in place, you're going to want sponges for either side. I like those rectangular sponges. Um, try not to use sheets. Those often show up as artifacts. Try and keep your hands out of there. Remove their pacifiers. Um, if they have earrings, um, some people like to pierce their baby's ears. So if they can remove them, try and remove them. If they can't, I tend to use tape for the lateral and try and tape them out of the way for the view. Um, specialty views that you won't see very often. So PA skull is a straight on PA, zero angle, exit at the glabella. Trauma AP, usually these patients go to CT, but you know, if there's a big metal knife in their head, we might have to do it. So you're gonna shoot um, straight on. Obviously they're in the neck collar, so we're not gonna be modifying that. Never remove the neck collar, but your central ray is gonna be directly to the glabella on this one. Um, AP, the zero degree, the petrous ridges are gonna superimpose um, the supraorbital regions. AP versus PA, you can tell um, usually by the magnification of orbits and the nasal area here. See how this one is smaller? So this one obviously is PA, right? And this one's AP, it's farther away. AP, PA skull. Um, so this one is just showing you with this line here. Um, the centering wise, where they're centered, they clipped off the top of the skull. Um, so they wanna, you wanna watch for that. This one, um, again, is the head and neck are not positioned correctly. So also, don't collimate um, wide open to include almost the whole cervical spine, please. Thank you. Trauma AP Caldwell. So the boards love to ask these random questions. So normally we do PA Caldwell, you angle 15 degrees down. AP Caldwell, you're just going to angle 15 degrees up. And something my instructor taught me was if their toes are up, you angle up. If their toes are down, you angle down. <laughs> and I like that. That one always stuck with me. Um, the alternate PA axial Caldwell is using a 25 to 30 degree angle. It supposedly gives you better visualization of the superior orbital um, fissures and the foramen and the orbital rim. This one exits at the level of the nasion, and the petrous pyramids are projected at or just below the IOM of the orbit, so inferior margin. And SMV, never done one of these, but there is an SMV of the skull as well. Um, so you're gonna put the top of their head on the image receptor. IOML is um, gonna be perpendicular to the IR. And your central ray is an inch and a half inferior to mandibular symphysis. So here, coming down, shooting midline. This is what supposedly the SMV would look like. I've never done one, but I hope maybe you guys do at some point, maybe. But most of the head stuff goes to CAT scan. And then the other PA axial is the Haas method. This uses a 25 um, degree cephalad angle. The OOML is um, perpendicular and you're gonna center one and a half inches below the inion, which is that kind of um, palpable landmark on the back of the skull and exit one and a half inches superior to the nasion. So it's gonna kind of swoop up this way. And this is what that image would look like. So the dorsum cellae is larger within the form and magnum here with that um, reverse angle. And okay, so just review your skull anatomy for me on the rest of this PowerPoint, but you don't need me to read that to you.